Maybe you've got an opportunity to give a talk, take the stage. Maybe that's a TED stage or a TEDx stage. I've got a few tips for you today. As a past president of the National Speakers Association Mountain West chapter, and as someone who was recently invited to be a speaker coach for a TEDx event, I've been taking a look at what it takes to make a good TED talk. If you're watching this video, you probably have some interest in being a TED or a TEDx speaker. Maybe you've been selected already to fill one of those positions. And I would love to share with you a few pointers that are going to make this a better experience for you. Let's start with the official guidelines that are put out by TED. There's a link in the description below for the TEDx speaker guide, which will hit a number of different points. This is just a little illustrated version that will create a little roadmap for you as you put together your TED talk. And let's talk about each of those points in this video. Probably the first important thing to do is to get familiar with the TED format. If you've watched TED or TEDx talks here on YouTube, for example, you're going to see that there's a similar look and feel to most of them. These speakers do not use a teleprompter. They are limited to 18 minutes maximum. And the organizer of the event might set it at a different level. The TEDx event that I'm participating in, TEDx Lehigh, has opted for a 12 minute time frame. So it's usually shorter than a lot of speakers are used to. Even novice speakers are going to find that 12 to 18 minutes is a really short period of time. And in that time, what we do is develop an idea that's worth sharing. TED is all about ideas worth sharing, which leads us to the second point. Develop the idea. Is it interesting? Is it new? Does it have an appeal to a broad audience? Is it based on solid science or research? These are important questions to ask as you come up with your TED or TEDx idea that's worth sharing. Now, some people have asked me, well, Dr. Paul, do I need to be an expert? Yes, I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. Yes, you need to be an expert. You don't have to be the expert on any particular topic. In fact, that's really rare for someone to be the expert, but you're an expert. You've spent enough time in this area or researching this thing that you have something to share. And it's based on a degree of confidence and competence that makes your idea actually worth sharing. You'll want to run this idea by a few people and just see what kind of traction it gets. A lot of times we think of things in our own mind and we're like, oh yeah, that is totally awesome. And then we run it by somebody else and they're like, mm -hmm, meh, right? So run it by a few people and get some feedback about the original idea. And then we'll go to step three. Step three is to make an outline or a script. I'm a professional speaker. I rarely speak from a script. Even these videos are mostly outlined, but not scripted. For your TED or TEDx talk, you want to have it sharp, defined, honed. Every word, every illustration, every story has to carry its own weight. And we're working on a strict timeline here. So scripting it out is a good idea. You want it to sound natural, like you're just sharing an idea, even though it's probably mostly memorized. There's a great little book out, especially for people like me who are professional speakers. Haley Foster came up with this mini book. I love this. It fits in your pocket. Don't tank your TED Talk. 12 mistakes that professional speakers make. These are people who speak for a living 
then they ruin their TED talk because they don't understand some of the things that Haley has pointed out in her mini book here. What if you're not a professional speaker? Still going to be helpful because it gives you the, the insight about how these TED talks work and what makes them effective and what makes them less effective, what the culture is around TED and TEDx. So I highly recommend Haley's book. There's other good books out there. There's one called Talk Like Ted by Carmine Gallo. Also excellent and will give you even more examples of what's successful from the TED stage. So as you outline and script your talk, pay attention to what's working and what's not working. Use effective stories, use humor, get a coach. I am the coach for the TEDx Lehigh event which means that I get to work with all of the speakers in that event to help them refine their message and deliver it in a way that will make it memorable. If your event doesn't have a coach or if you don't have a coach, hire one. You can find excellent coaches like Haley, for example, who offers some coaching services for speakers, but there's others as well. Connect with somebody who can give you the feedback and help you to refine your performance so that when you take that stage, it's powerful, it's memorable, and you've already worked out all of the common pitfalls or the hitches or the mistakes that people commonly stumble into when they get onto a TEDx stage. Now, tip number four, create some slides or visuals. The TEDx stage is not the place for slides that are full of bullet points and a lot of text. That's not what we're there for. You've got a short period of time. Every visual has to carry its own weight and pay its own way. That's true of stories and anecdotes and illustrations. Everything that you use in your TED Talk has to carry its own weight. I've gotten this question several times in the last few weeks. Well, Dr. Paul, how many slides should I use? Okay, that's a hard question to answer because it always depends. Here's a little rule of thumb that I would invite you to use. If you want to show an image, and by the way, make sure you own the image. Don't be doing copyright infringement by stealing something off of the internet. You make sure that you own the image. Most of the images that you'll want to share either have something to do with your personal experience, so you're going to own those images, or it's a more general principle that you could create an image for that you own. So make sure that you have the rights to it. But beyond that, ask this question. Does this image save me from having to say another 100 words? Now I just picked 100 out of a hat. What if it's 20 words? That could be a worthwhile visual as well. You've heard that a picture is worth a thousand words. If that is literally true and this picture conveys something that you would have had to spend 30 seconds or a minute explaining, then probably it's a good image to include in your presentation. If the image requires a lot of explanation, you've got to weigh that out because you've got an economy of time here that you're working with as well. So I wouldn't be too eager to show the image just because it's a cool image if it doesn't in a compelling way forward your idea worth sharing. If it does, great. If it doesn't, you might want to ax it. Now, tip number five from the TEDx guide, practice, 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 practice. Oh, and rehearse too. Practice and rehearse, rehearse and practice. Now, is going through your talk a couple of times in your mind sufficient? No, it's not. For our TEDx Lehigh event, we're setting up two events that are dry runs or practices or rehearsals for these speakers, many of whom are already professional speakers. We want you to have a successful, powerful experience on that TEDx stage. So you're going to rehearse in front of your family. Sometimes they're the hardest ones, right? Because they can be kind of critical. We want you to rehearse in front of people you don't know. We want you to rehearse in front of people who like you and people who don't necessarily like you. Let's get you in front of as many people as we can running through this speech. This will help you to monitor the timing, the delivery. You get to see what's working and what's not working and make the adjustments as you go. This is an essential step. Do it. Tip number six, give your talk. 
This is in the guide. It actually says, give your TEDx talk. There will come a time when it's time to deliver it. Oh, and by the way, when you apply for a TEDx event, you're probably not going to be selected. The first time, it's like publishing a book. You'll get seven rejection letters before you get an acceptance. That's all part of the process. Don't let that discourage you too much. Continue to apply. If you've got an idea worth sharing, somebody's going to pick it up at some point. And as you continue to refine this message, you will get better at sharing it and that's going to make it more likely that you're going to get on that stage at some point and have the videos that people get to share here on YouTube and everywhere else. If you're selected for this event, enjoy the experience. You've put in the work, you've got a great idea, you're prepared, you're ready to share this idea. Enjoy it. Savor the moment. This is what you've been working for. Give yourself the reward of actually enjoying delivering your talk. And then afterwards, it's interesting in the TEDx guide, it, it says this one too, savor the glory. Just enjoy basking in the aftermath of having done an effective and powerful TEDx talk. It will live on in a video format forever. Is that a little daunting? No, don't worry about that part, but enjoy the fact that you now get to share this and build on the success that you've had. This is a great way for you to share your idea that's already worth sharing. I hope you found this helpful. After you give your TEDx talk, send me a link. I would love to see what you did.